So today, we're going to be speaking about the five reasons why I love my Toyota GT86. Hey up guys and welcome back to the channel. So as you've just seen from that little intro there, the video is going to be about the five things I love about my Toyota GT86. I've owned the GT86 for around five or six weeks now and in that time I've done 1100 or 1200 miles so I think I'm pretty well qualified to tell you guys what I like about it, what I don't like about it and what I absolutely love about it. If you're new here and you're enjoying this video please drop a like down below, consider subscribing to the channel, it really really helps me with my YouTube growth. So I feel like I'm babbling on a little bit so I'm just going to go straight into point number one. Point number one is the engine. The FA20 engine which is also shared by the Scion FRS, the Subaru BRZ and the GT86 is a fantastically high revving, agile engine straight out of the box. If you're driving down the A road, B road or if you're in the US, mountains, twisties, anything like that, the car will reward you massively. In addition to that, you can actually bolt a turbocharger or a supercharger onto the car to give you more power via forced induction. In addition to that, you've actually got a lot of flexibility around the tuning of the car which I'll come into a little bit later in this video but to give you an example you can change the characteristics of the sound of the car by going for either an equal length header and getting that normal four cylinder sound or going for an unequal length header and going for that classic Subaru rumble. So that's point number one out of the way let's go straight into point number two. Point number two is going to be about the chassis. Now before I bought the GT86 I was doing a hell of a lot of reading about the reviews making sure that the move that I was making was the right one. Now one thing that I kept seeing being commented on was the chassis, how it was incredible, how it was stiff, rigid, agile, great handling and I agree with every single one of them points. It's a light car from factory and it's extremely well balanced. You will have so much satisfaction bombing down an A road or a B road or if you're in the US down the twisted or up the mountains and it will just give you a great feeling. The GT86, the BRZ and the Scion FRS take as much as you can give to them. If you go approaching a corner there's one or two things that are going to happen. Scenario number one, you're going to go through the corner with loads of grip and you're going to come out feeling brilliant. Scenario number two, you're going to go in there, you're going to put a little bit more throttle on, the back end's going to come out, the trash control will rein you in and you'll still feel great. And all that can be decided just by your throttle input. So moving on to point number three then, we're going to be talking about the aftermarket and tuning scene for these cars. So one thing that I was incredibly surprised about is the sheer size and mass of this scene. Yes, I agree that there's a finite number of tuners in the UK that deal with these cars, but what we're tending to find is that there are a lot of Japanese specialists who are dabbling here and there and then starting to do more for them. All you need to do to see the sheer width and breadth of this scene is to look in the USA and to look in Japan. There's so many parts available from these massive tuners that everybody's heard of, Greddy, Blitz, HKS, and there's probably 10 more that I've completely forgotten about. Another thing worth noting is that with the GT86, obviously you've got the three cars between them, so what you tend to find is that there are companies who are doing one part for three cars. There's also crossovers with the Subarus in the sense of the WRXs and STIs can chop and change parts without having to modify anything. So going into point number four then, I'm going to talk about the looks. So I personally think, I'm going to go out there and say this, that the GT86, the BRZ and the FRS is one of the best looking budget sports cars that money can buy today. Some of you guys might prefer the MX-5, some of you guys might prefer the old gen Celica, some of you might prefer the Caymans and Boxers of this world, but I just think the GT86 looks amazing. And in my eyes, there's only one thing which lets this car down, and that's the wheels. Now the wheels themselves, the 17 inch diameter from factory, the seven inch width from factory, but they're also indented quite a lot into the car's bodywork. That can all be sorted by a pair of aftermarket wheels. Just heed back to point number three, go and have a look to see how many wheels are available for this car. It is insane. So many different widths, so many different sizes, so many different styles, you will be spoiled for choice. One of my personal favorite things about the body of the GT86 is the view you get from the driver's seat. Now, I'm gonna show you guys some in-car footage at the moment, but when you look out of that side mirror, you can see the bulge on the back. 
Look out the front of the car, you can see the bulges on the front. It looks a lot wider and it looks a lot more aggressive than you think. So point number five is going to be about the community. So the community around the twins, the twins being the FRS, the GT86 and the BRZ. Now don't get me wrong, there still is some toxicity in the community as there is in every single one that you can possibly find. But to be fair, there's not half as much as what I've seen and experienced in other areas of the car community. One of the things that makes it's so great is the diversity of the people and builds in here go back to point number four go back to point number three and look at the different styles the different things you can buy for the car there's so many different builds out there there's two jz swaps ryan turk with his four five eight six swap there's people with an ls swap there's people with wide bodies there's people with no wide bodies there's people with big spoilers little spoilers no spoilers ducktail spoilers there's people with wide wheels cambered wheels low wheels low cars high cars rally cars every Everything you can possibly think of has been done. Now just while I'm in that same breath, I'm just going to say every single car you see, whether it be a GT86, a BRZ or a Cyan FRS is going to be different unless they're stock. Different wheel combinations, different body kit combinations, different engine combinations and that's what makes this community so good. There's so much help out there, everyone's willing to chip in and help with things. People have been asking about 2JZ swaps on the Facebook group and people have been helping them. People from Australia, people from England, people from New Zealand, people from Europe and people from America. There's just people helping everywhere and that's what makes it great so as a bit of a roundup then i just want to say i'm extremely happy that i have swapped to the gt86 platform the main reason being that it's making me fall in love with driving again it's making me realize the reason why i like driving so much yes it's not the most refined car on the road yes it does have its noises yes it does have its build quality but the car is a gem. I can really understand where all the good reviews are coming from because I agree with every single one of them. Yes, it could do with more power, but there are options out there. And if you haven't driven one, or you're thinking of buying one, or you're gonna buy one, please go out there and drive one, take it on some twisty roads, and you will see exactly what I mean. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. Again, if you did enjoy it, please like, subscribe to the channel, keep up to date with what I'm doing. And as always, I'll see you next time. That was extremely good timing with the lights going off just in time, but I'll see you guys later.